Hi guys, last time on 2.3 we learned about a concept of the average rate of change and also the instantaneous rate of change and from there we also learned a very big concept in um, business terms which is the marginals so whenever you see the word marginal make sure you take the derivative like right away okay so for example if you have like the marginal revenue it means that you have to take the derivative of the whole revenue function if you were to have marginal costs then you will have to take the derivative of the cost function and so on okay so um make sure you know what to do when you see the word marginals make sure you know how to uh, manipulate play around with all the rules to take down the derivatives and make sure you can tell the difference between the average rate of change and also the instantaneous rate of change okay so now for today let's talk about 2.4 um the product and quotient rules so the last time I, I i showed you guys like four or should i say like five rules to take down the derivative right so in here let me just do like a quick recap on them so constant rule in here is, it tells us that no matter whatever like number you have um it could be like a whole number integer fraction decimal mixed number as long as just by itself with no like variable attached to it when you take the derivative of it it will all go away okay so that means that it will all just become zero okay that's for the constant rule in here and then power rule um technically you're going to bring the power in front and then to get the new power you're going to take the old power minus one okay constant multiple um it means you just have to set aside the constant in front of the variable and then take the derivative Okay, and then some indifference, it's just like, you know, like separate the terms into like um, each terms and then it's easier for you to take like uh, each part rather than the whole thing at, a, at the time, okay? So let's talk about the first like concept that we have in here. I mean, like review that we have in here. In 2.2, we learned that the derivative of a sum or difference of two functions is simply the sum of di or difference of their derivatives, right? So what I mean in here is that I refer to four and five in here, okay? Um, the rules for the derivative of, of a product and quotient of two functions are not as simple, okay? So if you have like a product in here, you cannot just distribute the distributive and um, distribute the derivative into each of them. You cannot do that. You, you cannot do it like this, okay? Like I understand that the for the sum in here, you can distribute the de derivative into like each of the function to get like each derivative like separately and then um, we add them later on but for product and quotient you can't okay so similar thing will happen to this um, fraction in here we cannot distribute the derivative to the top part or the bottom part in here like this no that's a big no-no okay so make sure you have this down because in the exam one i'm going to ask you something like oh is the derivative of the product is the product of the derivatives and your answer will be no okay because they are not the same okay and why let me show you why there are actually like more formulas that we're going to learn for today um like together with the five rules that we learned from 2.2 today i'm going to show you the product rule and also the quotient rule okay so uh, technically by the end of today you're going to learn like seven rules to find a derivative okay in the easy way and make sure um there's you remember that there's also another way like the long complicated way to find the derivative which is the limit of definition the definition of you know derivative right like if you don't know what it is, uh, make sure you look back at like 2.1. Make sure you check on the word quotient formula and then the limit part for it. And if you still don't remember it, the hint in here will be like it has something to do with H or like delta X. Okay? Alright, so let's talk about the product rule in here. Um, technically, the formula is this. I'm not going to derive it. I'm not going to show you guys like how we get down to this formula as long as you know how to apply this formula into your work. That's cool to me, okay? And if you want to know the derivation of it, like the original, the origin of this formula, like how they de develop it, let me know, okay? I mean, I mean, like if you want, you can like Google it up. Um, it's like online everywhere, you know? But again, like if you need more help with, um, you know, if you're like curious and trying to figure out how they came up with the formula, let me know, I can help you with that also, okay? So that's the formula in here. Um, so technically when you take the derivative of a product, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna take the derivative of the first term, multiply it with the original second term, okay? And then we add it by the original first term times the derivative of the second term, okay? So, um, complicated enough, right? Let me show you how to actually work that, work that out, okay? So for my part here, I'm gonna get like my f to be um, negative five x plus three elsewhere and then this is my g right 
So just to make sure we're on the same page, let me write out everything. So I have my f equals to negative 5x plus 3 squared. And then let me space out a little bit in here for the derivative part. And then my gx in here equals to the square root of 7x plus 1. Okay? And just like a habit of me, like whenever you see, whenever I see the root uh, function in here, my first like go-to would be try to convert it back to the power form, okay? Because if you notice, there's no formula about like taking the derivative of the square root, right? And we all know that the square root can be rewritten as one half, right? So with that saying, I'm gonna turn this into seven x plus one, all to the power of one half, okay? And again, if you don't know the reason why, let me know. Um, just let me know so I can explain where this one half coming from, okay? So if you have like a Q root in here, it would be like one third. If you have like a fourth root in here, it would be like a fourth. And if you have like, I don't know, like square, I mean Q root of something square in here, this would be like two thirds, okay? So we're gonna take inside divided by outside, okay? If there's nothing on the inside, you can consider it as one, okay? And then square root, uh, you can imagine it, as like there's a two in front of it, but we just don't write a two because I don't know, it's just like extra. We know that square is for two and then that two is kind of like invisibly like there, okay? So let me take this out first and then um, let me also get rid of this. All right, so that's the first step. Um, the step one in here would be try to identify your F and your G based on just, you know, the location of them. Like the first term would be F and then the second term would be G, okay? And then step two, now you're gonna take the derivative of it. So let me put it in pink. So I'm gonna do f prime of x. So in here, I'm gonna do like the product rule and also the chain rule, okay? Like I'm gonna show you guys how to do the chain rule. Like uh, I'm gonna talk about chain rule like more specifically later. But for now, um, treat this whole thing like a thing, okay? So technically you're having something just like, you know, like you swear. And we all know that the derivative of u squared in here is just 2u, right? Because we're going to bring out, out a 2, and then the new power will be like 2 minus 1. So then there's a 1 in here, but then u to the first power will be just u, right? So that's what it is, okay? Um, now, it's, it's harder a little bit. Um, you know what? Here, let me write as like a table for you guys to, you know, like easier to follow this. Okay. And why do we do that, right? So as you can see, like on the inside here, we don't just have like a thing, right? We have like two things in here. We have like two terms in here, right? We have like the negative five X and then we also have the, the, the three, right? So some of you guys may ask like, is the two, like is this two in here, is it meant for the negative five X or is it meant for like the five or is it meant for the X or is it meant for the three? And I'm gonna tell you it's meant for everything in here because the two, it affects on everything like underneath of the square root, okay? Like, it, or inside the square root, okay? So my technique in here is that I'm gonna do it like this. So for the outside layer, just imagine that you're gonna have like a U. Okay, for the inside layer, my bad. Inside layer, just imagine that you're gonna have a U in here that equals to negative five X plus three. Then the outside layer, this is like inside, by the way. Then for the outside layer, you're gonna get a U square, right? Because like, this is for outside and then the blue part, this is for inside, okay? So when you take the derivative of this, it's gonna be like negative five, negative five in there and then you take the derivative of x and then the plus three in here is just going to be gone because the three in here is just a number and let me rewrite a plus in here because it looks a little bit ugly so it's just going to be like plus zero like here or if you want you can just ignore it because plus zero is technically like nothing right and then for the for the derivative of the u square in here if you think about it it's just going to be like two u right and because you know that this u in here it equals to negative 5x plus 3. So let me highlight it in blue. So u equals to negative 5x plus 3. So then this turns out to be 2 and then times negative 5x plus 3. All in parentheses, okay? And let me take out the arrow just so that you can see the work. So now what you're going to do, um, well, we have to keep simplifying it, right? So 
This one in here, the derivative of x is just 1, so we're going to get like negative 5 times 1, which is negative 5. Okay? And then for the other one, if you distribute the 2 inside, you're going to get a negative 10x and then minus 6. Okay? So what you're going to do is that you take this, you multiply with this. Okay? And by the way, the name for like the ping um, method, the ping table in here, we call it the chain rule. So if you want to look it up, you can go ahead and do it. Okay? So now, if we multiply them together, we're going to get something like negative 5 in here. And then because on the second box, they come as a group. So it's going to be like negative 10x minus 6, right? And, okay, first of all, let, let me move this thing a little bit, you know, like down. Okay. Trying my best to not taking like the extra stuff and just move it down, but it doesn't go down like as I want to. So let me just erase some stuff in here and put back like the Y in here for you guys really quick. Sorry for like wasting the time. Okay, so this is the table. This is the end of it, and then if you multiply them together like this and that, you're going to get a 50x plus 30, okay? And again, let me fix on the plus again, so that looks ugly. Okay, so we got the, um, okay, so let's double check at what we have already for the, like, formula, right? So in here, if you notice, we have the f prime in here, we have the g because it's just the second term. We have the f of x already because it's the first term. So the only thing that we're missing here is the derivative of g, right? So we're going to try to find out the derivative of g in here. And how do we do that? Well, we're going to do the chain rule again. So let me put it in here. So again, we're going to have like inside and outside. Okay, for the inside, we're going to get u equals to 7x plus 1. For the outside, we're going to get u to the 1 over 2. Okay, and again, if you're not sure, like, why they, like, inside and outside, just let me know, okay? And here, just uh, let me use, like, the color code in here for the inside, and this would be for the outside, okay? So now, let's take the derivative of them, right? So this would be, you know, like, 7, and then the derivative of x, and then the 1 would just disappear. So this, to me, is, like, uh, 7 times 1, which is 7. And then on the other side, we're going to do, like, 1 half in front. And then u to the 1 half minus 1, and that is negative 1 half. So we have to rewrite it. We have to rewrite them, like, properly, and it becomes 1 over 2, and then square root of u, okay? And then since I told you that the u equals to, like, this, um, like, substitution from the beginning, we have that u equals to 7x plus 1, right? So in here, instead of u, we're going to have it equal to... 1 divided by 2 and then square root of 7x plus u. Okay, let me move this thing a little bit up so we have more space to write it down. Okay, so equals and 1 divided by 2 and then the square root of 7x plus 1. Okay, so now that we did everything that we can already, so let's circle like the things, like the final things that we have in here, right? So I have that and this, right? So I'm going to multiply them together. So then if you multiply them together, you're going to get like 7 is 7 divided by 1, right? Hopefully everyone knows that. Because like in the past, I got some people saying that 7 is 7 divided by 7, which is um, not true because 7 divided by 7 is actually 1, not 7. So hopefully everyone agrees with me on this one. Like 7 is actually 7 divided by 1, right? So we're going to do top times top, which is 7 times 1. I'm going to get a 7 in here. And then for the bottom, I'm going to do 1 times... 2 square root of like 7x plus 1, which is 2, and then square root of 7x plus 1. Okay, so now that's step 2 and ready. So now, as for the final answer, let me put it in green. We're gonna piece everything together into the formula in here. So we go f prime, which is this. So we have 50x plus 30 in a group. So we have to put parentheses over them. And then g. So I'm done with that, right? And then times g. G is um, this in here. Or if you want to, you can also just stick with this one because I hate it. But if I see the like the power in like um, 
fraction okay so if you notice in the exam or in the quizzes you will see that don't write like your final answer in negative fractional exponents so that means that I don't allow like you know like fractional exponent okay so it, it that means that I'm gonna stick with this one in here and I'm just gonna put like 7x plus 1 in here okay and then plus let me take these out so that I have space to write everything like on one line okay and there should be a 1 in here parentheses in here okay green again okay so I'm done with that and I have the plus in here so that's a plus and I move on to the F term so I have F in here equals to negative 5x plus 3 squared I'm done with the F so lastly you have G prime which is times 7 divided by 2 and then square root of 7x plus 1 okay so now in the test I'm not gonna like force you or I'm I will not recommend you guys multiply um, like the square root into the group in here so you can just keep them as 50x plus 30 and then times square root of 7x plus 1 and it is because there's not much to do on this one and I don't want you guys to like expand it for like no reason but for the second one in here for this let me put it in I don't know like purple okay this one is something that you guys must do okay because um, the group in here, the negative 5x plus 3, all squared in here, it could be put under the 1 in here. And again, we can do top times top and then bottom times bottom, right? So then that will turn out to be uh, plus 7 and then open parenthesis, negative 5x plus 3, all squared, and then divided by 2 and then the square root of 7x plus 1. Okay, so this to me is the final answer. Let me box it really quick in here find the answer okay like this is good enough for me i mean like if you want to if you're like a math major or something like that i don't know like most of you guys are business major but just in case you guys like mind in math or something um you can put this thing over like one and then you can get the common denominator which is like this guy in here and then you can multiply this whole fraction by this guy like top and bottom by this guy and then combine the tops and then same things um but i would not recommend doing that in the test because you know the time is limited right so don't try to do that in the test but like if you have like spare time, you have free time, go ahead and try it, okay? So before I move on, let me just put like a green star in here for your part, okay? So just a heads up in here, this is your F and then the other one is your G, okay? So that's the first step I did for you guys already. Second step, you have to take the derivatives of them. And then third step, based on the formula right here, to piece everything together, okay? Only three steps, okay? And make sure you always simplify things before you move on, okay? Like like if you keep it like like this in here and multiply this with like two u in here you will see you will see like a problem we have an x in here and we have a u in here which is like a bad sign right we have like two variables in here which is weird so make sure you just simplify as you go okay and now let's talk about the quotient rule okay so quotient rule in here is like really similar to the product rule in the sense that you have to identify which one is your f and which one is your g but in this case everything would be like so obvious um, the top part will be F and then the bottom part will be G. So step one is like easy, right? Step two, you're going to do the similar thing. You have to find the derivative of F and you also have to find the derivative of G. Sometimes you have to use the, the chain rule for it and that's okay because, well, we have the table with us, right? But if it costs you a problem, let me know so I can, you know, give you more practice. You try on that one or if you want to, you can look over the textbook to do more problems on that one prior to the exam, okay? And then last step in here, step three, um, we have like a formula in here for the for the quotient rule. So make sure you have these two formulas down together with the five formulas from like 2.2, okay? As you notice, this formula is, is like more scary. It looks more complicated compared to the product rule. But trust me, when you have like everything together, it, it will not be like that scary anymore. Like it will be like, okay, like decent looking, okay? So first step in here, um, I have to define my F and my G. So F in here, like for shortcut, if you want, you can write like F of X. If you're lazy like me, you can put just like F, okay? In the test though, make sure you put F of X, okay? Don't be lazy in the test. You don't want to get like any points off. So don't be lazy, put like F of X, okay? And put G of X. Don't put F and G by itself, okay? So I have F in here equals to the top part, which is negative five X plus three squared. And then let me space out a little bit in here. And then 
I have my g equals to the bottom part, which is 7x plus 1. I'm going to like do it really quick in here because um, these are the two functions we have from the last time. But it's just like the difference in here is their operation, right? From the last example, we did multiplication. So that's why we have to use the product rule. In this example, we divide them. So that's why we have to use the quotient rule, okay? But the procedure for like step one and step two, they should be all the same, okay? So this one is two to the power of one half. And then uh, let me put it in pink for the derivative. So I have like f prime equals to like, um, what is it? So I'm gonna do like inside and outside in here really quick. I'm gonna put like I and O, like imagine they're, imagine they're there, okay? So the inside in here is like negative 5x plus 3, and then the derivative of it will be negative 5. The outside in here is u squared, which is 2u, which is 2 times negative 5x plus 3. And if I multiply everything together, I'm going to get negative 10x um, plus 6, right? So in here, I'm going to multiply this with that and then this with that. And I'm going to get like 50x minus 30. Okay, I might have did something weird in the past. Let me go back to this really quick. Ah, I know what I did wrong. This one, it should be a, like a plus. Yeah, I, I, I miss it when I multiply the 2 with a 3. So this one here should be a plus in here. And hence, this one in here should be a minus. Okay, and then this doesn't change much still. It's just like one side. But yeah, sorry if I confuse you for that one. So, minus in here, minus in there. Okay. And again, if you have any questions at any part in here, make sure you take a screenshot of it and then just send it to me so that I know it. Okay. And then back to our problem. Wait, I feel like I still did something weird. Why do I have... Oh, I did right. I did right. 50x minus 30. 50x minus 30. Okay, it's young good. Yeah, I just like have to double check. Okay, same thing for like the g prime in here. We're gonna do the inside and outside table, but this time it's gonna be like u. The inside is like seven x plus one. Outside is like u to the one half, which is one divided by two square root of u. Um, and then the u in here it is seven x plus one, so it's gonna be like that. Okay, and then. What else do we have for the derivative of 7x plus 1? We have a 7 in here, right? If you multiply this and that together, we're going to get 7 divided by 2 and then square root of 7x plus 1. Okay? So now, what do we do next? Well, we have to piece everything together in the uh, formula to get, like, the final answer. So let's do that in green. And then we're going to do f prime, which is this. And I told you guys they come in a group, so make sure you put parentheses over them. Okay, and then the next one is g, so I'm going to multiply with g, the square thingy. And again, like, you can go with this one, but then I really hate it to see, like, the fractional, like, exponents, so don't do it in a test, okay? It's okay to do it in a homework, but then just don't do it in the quizzes or test, okay? And then next I have a minus sign, and then I have the f function, which is negative 5x plus 3 and then squared. And then I have a g prime function, which is uh, 7 over 2 squared of 7x plus 1 in here. And then because 7 in here is just loner, so I'm going to bring it in front, okay? Because usually the loner, we don't write it like in the back, okay? And this looks awkward, so let me just move it a little bit like this. 7x plus 1, okay? And they, everything in here will be over g squared, right? And g in here is this. We square it. The square will cancel it out with a square. So we're just going to get 7x plus 1. Okay? So now, um, this is awkward because I told you guys, like, in the previous example, you can stop in here, right? Like, there's nothing wrong with this answer. If you want, you can go on and just simplify it further. But I believe this one is not an algebra class. It's more of, like, a business class, right? So as long as you get the concept. I'm okay with it, but for number two in here, it's really ugly to see like a fraction with three parts, okay? So I don't want to see it, so that's why I'm going to have to put this one over one, and then we have to do more work for this, okay? So uh, I'm going to get the common denominator for the top and bottom in here, so I'm going to multiply 
this in here to both the top and the bottom. So after this, I'm gonna get something like, okay, first of all, the two in here is a loner, right? So I'm gonna put it, the two right there and then the 50X minus 30. Okay, so this is there, this is down ready. So I have to multiply the square root of seven X plus one with the square root of seven X plus one because they like double up. So then they just freed out from the print, uh, from the square root and we just have like a seven X plus one in here. Okay, and then for this part, I'm just gonna re rewrite everything because I don't want you guys to like um, do much. Or if you want to, the next step in here will be like foil anyways. So let's foil this one out, okay? So let me take out some work in here so then you guys will have, you know, like some extra space. Okay, so there should be a parenthesis in here. Okay, so this in here, let me do it out in here real quick. So by foiling, I have negative three, negative five x plus three times negative five x plus three. And just in case you don't know what foil is, we're gonna do first and then inner, outer, no, 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 I mix up. So first and then inner, outer, and then last. Okay, so as long as you have like four rounds in here, as long as you have like four goes in here, it doesn't matter which order you go for, okay? So in this one, um, let me like um, fast forward and just put out the answer in here. I'm gonna get like 25x squared and then minus 15x and then another minus 15x and also a uh, plus nine. Okay, so let me take out the arrow. And after that, I'm gonna simplify the, uh, the like terms, which is this one and that one. And then make sure you don't cancel them because both of them are like, you know, like negative 15s, right? So just imagine that you lost $15 and then you continue to lose another $15, right? So that means that you have a debt of, you know, $30, right? So this will become negative 30X and then the plus nine and then the 25X way, I'm just gonna write them down, okay? So this in here, will go into this parentheses down here. That's what I have for the square, for the foil part, okay? And then before I write out like the like the over like seven x plus one in here, for the sake of space, uh, let me put the put back the, the denominator like at last, okay? So let me go ahead and continue to simplify the top part. So this in here equals to what? It equals to what is it? Actually, here, let me just put back like the bottom before like too late, I guess. Okay, so the bottom in here, we will have like the old denominator, which is seven X plus one, right? And aside from that, we also have this bottom in here. So the two is the loner, so I'm gonna put it in front and then the square, I'm gonna put it in the back, okay? So again, I can like split them out, okay? And then let me go ahead and do the work up here on the top part. Okay, so let me continue to work up here. Okay, so that is, well, we have to like foil. Okay, it's gonna be a long problem, first of all, okay? So I'm gonna foil everything like this, that, and then, you know, this with this, and after that, multiply everything by two, okay? So the two in there, I'm just gonna put it in front. 50 times seven is gonna be 35, and then a zero X squared, and then I have to 10 X, and then I also have plus 50x minus 30, okay? That's for the first go, and then for the second go, I'm just gonna go ahead and distribute everything on the inside. So let me take out the arrow, and then that will be, what is it? Um, calculator, seven times 25, that is 125x squared, and then plus 210x, and then minus, what is it, 63, okay? And everything again will be like under this, okay? So let me just, you know what? Let me just highlight the denominator so we don't have to keep writing it until the final answer, okay? So now what we're gonna do is that we have to keep simplify this like top part, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply everything in, but before that, I'm gonna go ahead and add these two together. So negative to 10 plus 50, I have 
negative 160x, okay? So then I'm gonna distribute the two into the 350x square and then also to the negative 160x and then also to the negative 30, okay? So this in here will become um, 700x square and then minus 32, 0x and then minus 60, okay? And I'm just gonna go ahead and rewrite everything that is left over to 10x minus 63. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and combine these two. So I got 700 minus 175. That is 225x squared. And then I got negative 320 and then plus 210. That is negative 110x. And also negative 60 minus 63. That is negative 123. Okay, so this is like what I have for the top part, okay? And now, uh, what do we do next? We're gonna put it, everything in here over the bottom in here, which is like two. And then open parentheses, seven x plus one, times the square root of seven x plus one, okay? So let me pause for like a, a good five second in here and then just box the answer in here, just so you guys can like, you know, like see everything and absorb it really quick and again if you have any questions just let me know okay like you have to let me know before it's too late okay so this one is our final answer again if you have any questions let me know okay and now let's move on to the last oh wait let me put a star in your part first before I forget so this is what you have to turn in for the work and also last one in here, um, by the way, this is what you have to turn in for the work, just like, you know, a heads up. And then for the applications in here, because we're business majors, so we have to know how to apply the math part into the, like, real life situation, right? So, um, the problem for my part, it is the price, the price per pound of lean and extra lean ground beef in the United States from 1998 to 2005, which is, is the year can be modeled by that uh, ugly formula in there. So let me just, you know, like circle that. And then the T in here is like within um, eight and then 15, okay? And then this in here tells us to find the derivative of this function. And after that, we have to plug in T for 14, and then we have to interpret the meaning for it. Okay, so three things to do, right? Okay, it's gonna be long and ugly. <laughs> Okay, so if you recommend, recognize it already, this one is a fraction, so it has to be like the quotient rule that we have to apply in here, right? Like quotient rule that we have to use in here. This is F and this is G, by the way, like we always have F for the top part and then G for the bottom part, okay? And now let me do F prime. In here it's gonna be easier than the last time because we don't have like, you know, like the whole group to any power. So um, let me take the, the derivative of the top part, which is f in here. So 176 is a constant, so that go that goes away into a zero. Next one in here, uh, negative 20.8t. I'm gonna do it really quick. So it's gonna the derivative of it will be negative 20.8 times one, which is negative 20.8. Okay. Last one, I have uh, 0.67t squared. So when I take the derivative of it, I'm gonna get 0.67 times 2t, which is 1.34, and then the t in here for the variable. And again, if you guys are not familiar or not comfortable using the t variable in here, you can always swap them, swap them back to the x, okay? Just, just imagine wherever you have the t in here, they all x, okay? And that will be easier for your part, okay? And with the similar logic in here, I'm gonna find the g prime in here. So again, 100 in here is also a constant, so that goes away. And then the next term in here would be negative 12.8 times 1, which is negative 12.8, right? And then the last term in here is going to be 0.43 times 2t, which is 0.86t. Okay, and let me rewrite a plus in here because it looks ugly. Okay, and then if you don't remember the formula in here, it looks like f prime g minus f g prime divided by g squared okay if it were to be like in person class you have to remember this ugly formula okay but then lucky for you guys that this is all my class so as long as you have the quotient rule and then the product rule in front of you you don't have to remember them at all okay but if you can i mean it's like it's always come in handy right so it's always helpful anyway so it's time to plug everything back into this formula in here so i'm gonna get something like f prime which is 
negative 20.8 plus 1.34t and then that times g which is what is it 100 minus 12 plus 12.8 t and then plus 0.43 t squared as you can like imagine it's going to be a long problem okay and i promise you guys like if it were to be on a test i'm going to give you some shorter functions okay it's not going to be as long okay and then for the second part i'm going to have like a minus in there and an f i have 176 minus 20.8 t plus 0.67 t square and i have that times g prime which is negative 12.8 plus 0.86 t okay so as you can imagine the next step it will be like foil and for each of the like group in here you're gonna have like six six goes for them okay so this one is like there there and then there and then you also have to distribute a 1.34 into this that and that and then you have to do the same thing for the bottom so you have 176 into the first term second term and then the negative 20 20.80 into the first term second term and then the same thing goes for this one okay and everything after you did for the like the second group will have to be changed the the sign okay like their size have to be changed because they are all after the negative okay so um to save the time let me just show you like um the, the answer in here i'm not gonna ask you to do something crazy as this one for like the time concern in the test but again like if you want you can like um foil all of that and then check check your answer with mine in here but i'm not gonna show like all the steps like all like the terms in here and i'm just gonna show you guys like a simplified version of it okay and by the way like everything in here after you simplify you have to put everything in here over g square which is negative wait a hundred minus 12.8 t plus point 43 t square and then square again okay so in shortcut um the top part after you like a whole bunch of you know like messy uh simplification stuff you're gonna get 0.38 t, t square minus 17.36 t and then plus 172.8 and the bottom will be the same because we don't do anything for the bottom okay so just uh really quick in here if you were to consider like a uh, foil the bottom part don't do that okay we don't ever do anything to the bottom for potion rule okay never ever ever okay don't do any math work for the bottom at all okay so make sure if you have to multiply if you have to do any algebra it's always for the top okay it's only for the top don't do anything on the bottom don't touch the bottom okay just keep it there write down but then don't do anything to it okay so this is the derivative that we got so we're done with this part in here and now you have to plug in t for it so um here okay you know what here let me just copy it down again so i'm gonna plug in 14 for wherever i have a t in here so this is gonna look like 14 in here square and then minus 17 times 0.36 and then times 14 and then plus 172.8 and then for the bottom part i'm gonna get 100 minus 12.8 times 14 and then plus 0.43, 14 square, and then after that, everything must be square again, okay? So this, if you do it correctly in your calculator, is gonna give you something like 0 0.000, so three zeros, okay? And then 588. Okay, that's like enough for the math part. So last part, how can we understand it? Like, what does it mean, right? So this in here, it means that the price per pound of lean and extra lean ground beef will be 0 0.000588 higher than next year okay so it's just telling you how much the cost will like rise up for the next year and that's all it is okay and in here because we're talking about p in here it's the price right so um we're gonna get like say if this year the lean meat is only cost you i don't know like one dollar then next year it's gonna cost you one dollar and then 0 0.000 five eight a um cents or something like that okay it's just gonna be like the extra cost per pound okay so that's the meaning of it okay and it's it's cost higher because it's a positive value okay if you were to have a negative value in here it means that the the, the price of the lean meat next year will be lower compared to the current price 
okay, if you were to have the negative, okay? But again, in this problem, we have a positive in here, so it means that the price of the lean meat, whatever, will be higher, will be 0.000588 higher compared to the price of the lean meat next year, okay? And this is all about it, okay? So again, if you have any questions, let me know, okay? Thank you for your listening. Take care and have your day. Bye-bye.